Chapter 32. Next thing Harry knows, he's waking up in the student infirmary. There are flowers and cards from presidents and queens and diplomats. And Harry yawns and collects his glasses. He seems pleased, like a man can seem pleased. In walks Dumbledore, near dead and beautiful. He talks about Ron and Harmony and the Stone and Nick Flannel and Valmart and fathers and the way fathers can show up on the back of people's heads even when you least expect it. But Harry is way beyond that. He just wants to kick back a few cold ones and get through finals. Harry is eager to move on and he asks Dumbledore if he has seen that man horse around. Dumbledore says no, but Harry sees a glimmer in his eyes. Harry seems to guess that God would be happy to know that Dumbledore would try to keep Harry from such a union. But for Harry, God is no thing to worry about. They continue to chat about death and stones and next year and whether or not they plan to replace that one teacher that turned into ash. And then Dumbledore leans in. Your dad and I, we go way back. He was an evil bastard, but I loved him. I loved him so much. He proofread my novel. He liked it. He was the only one. This information seems to set right with Harry. Even though he knows his dad is pretty much the quintessential, quintessential evil person. He doesn't like feeling disconnected from his ancestors. He then goes on to wonder and worry about his mother. And whether or not his mother will return to earth in the form of a gas and show up on some lady's head and and go crazy for obtaining some powerful stone. But anyway, he decides not to worry about it, and Dumbledore begins to pick over what's left of Harry's candies. Nurses scuttle about and make little actions that Harry decides will be the perfect thing to fall asleep to. Dumbledore, the scavenger, takes his jelly beans. Harry just doesn't care.